afternoon. Welcome to Keys News. I'm Bethan Edwards. And I'm Oliver Yarl. Good afternoon and welcome to Keys News. I'm Ellie Double. And I'm Lucy Fieldhouse. Good afternoon and welcome to Keys News. Coming up in today's programme. We give you the latest from the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. We take a look at the 35-year-old trains still rattling their way through Salford. And how the University of Salford is tackling mental health with their students. We start with a very hard-hitting story of a mother who tragically lost her son to suicide and now she wants to get the message out that it's okay to talk. It was taken just before he got stuck in hospital over Christmas. This is the first time his mum, Pam, has had the courage to talk about the loss of her son. He used to say he didn't want to be here and the conversations we used to have and I used to say to him, promise me, promise me you will not do... I won't, Mum, I won't, Mum. But he did. With Anthony, I would say he'd gone too far. He was, there was no coming back for Anthony. He thought, he genuinely thought that we would all be better off without him because all he said, as he said, I only ever bring pain to you. And I said, but I'd rather you bring pain than you not bring anything. Yeah. If I can stop one person from doing what Anthony did, even if it's just going to the doctors and getting help, if I can stop one person from doing it and destroying the mum and dad's lives, or the sisters, or the brothers, or their own children, then that's why I want to do it, to raise awareness. So now we are joined by our political correspondent, Joe Wilmot, to tell us what has been going on. So Joe, it's been an eventful few days. Yeah, it has been very, very eventful. It's been a, a relatively good conference for the Prime Minister in terms of policy, not so much in terms of PR. He's had quite a few thick of it moments, um, one of them being uh, the most notable, which actually started trending on Twitter, was the no disposable cups. Uh, he was uh, walking through the conference, cameras were following him, uh, an aide passed him uh, a cup of coffee in a disposable cup, uh, and it was snatched out of his hand immediately by another aide who was then heard saying no disposable cups. Uh... Salford Crescent is a small, calm station. Despite large passenger numbers, the station remains tranquil, even at peak times. But this does not last for long, however, as is proven by this relic of the 1980s as it thunders its way into the platform. What is it that passengers find so daunting about a ride on one of these purple behemoths? They're awful. And why are they awful? They're slow. They're old. They're never on time. It's not the type of thing you'd find in London, but that's that's to be expected. Perhaps the issue with pacers is that they've been taken care of a little too much. These trains actually started their lives as Leyland buses, but during the 1980s, in a spell of great financial uncertainty in the British rail industry, the buses were welded to the chassis of freight trains, given a lick of paint and sent on their way. Now let's take a look at what's in the papers. So in the Daily Mail, we can see that it is mostly about Brexit, you know, because of last night. Uh, trust this lot to turn triumph into disaster. And we also have a bit about Harry and Meghan's aid palace is stoking hysteria. Yeah, The Guardian, again, is very Brexit central, with Parliament put brakes on Johnson's race for Brexit. So, as well as the Metro, uh, it's still focusing on Brexit again. Boris puts Brexit bill on hold. And we also have a little bit about Meghan dressed in purple. It's more than two years since Tony Walsh stood in central Manchester and recited his poem, This is the Place, in the wake of the arena bomb. It helps raise almost £200,000. Now he's about to go on tour, but he came into our studio first and spoke to Daniel Wilson. I, I've got poems that make people laugh. I've got some quite rude poems, you know. I've got poems that really go deep and tell personal stories. I've got some Manchester poems that I do locally. I've got some political stuff. And I really try and take people uh, on, a, on a journey, you know, give them an entertaining night out and try and <laughs> help people get their heads around what a poetry night is really capable of being, you know. Just across from the Lowry Cinema, The Voice has returned for its eighth year here in Salford. Fans have gathered on the red carpet to meet the stars. Sophie Buxton has more. is back here at Media City UK. Tonight the coaches and presenters will be walking down the red carpet before the search to find the UK's next great voice begins. Voice UK 2019. Fans didn't let the rain dampen their spirits as they waited patiently to catch a glimpse of this year's coaches as they took to the red carpet. Excited to see tonight. Oh, Are you really? Are you big Ollie fans? Oh definitely yeah. And yeah. have you been watching the um, 
Yes, I've been to see Ollie a few times now on The Voice. I wanted to touch his hand tonight, but I don't know if I'm going to get to. <laughs> the reason I'm here is because my granddaughter wants to try and get a photograph of them. We've been here all day waiting. <laughs> Probably Tom Jones, even though he did spend like a lot of time like, outside, he just went like, just kind of straight in. Just, like, flat, flat. I think he's cool enough, he can just yeah. get in Will I Am returns this year alongside new judge Megan Trainer. And auditions begin this Friday. Now to entertainment, our reporter Olivia Mullally attended the premiere for the new BBC war drama, World on a Fire. I wanted to show people who were living with the consequences of big political decisions rather than the people who made the decisions. But the main thing I wanted to do was tell the story from more than one national perspective, so not just the story of England or Britain in the war, but there's a German family, there's a Polish family, there's an American family, and as the series goes on, expand beyond that base because I think it's important that we remember that this was a, a war of international cooperation to defeat Nazism and I think that you know is a lesson we should never forget. Today English is one of the most commonly spoken languages in the world. In Salford it's seen as a huge barrier as around 30,000 residents were born outside of the UK. One food organisation has recognised this and now offers free English classes for all ethnicities. Laura Burns has more. We started um, Heart and Parcel for a need to um, address the communication and English skills needed for um, people or different communities in the area because the English language classes that we have currently for the government that are funded by the government are not particularly inclusive. The government's rules to qualify for funding means a large percentage of men and women are limited to the opportunity of free English classes. Hannon has lived in Italy for the past 17 years. However, since moving to the UK, Heart and Parcel has inspired her to improve her English. Because when I came in Manchester, it's, as, as I say, it was my first barrier in the language. I communication with people, it is doing, how are you, how do you do? It is for me very empty. That's all from us this week on Keys News. But don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Keys News. We'll be back for more news next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.